Hi everyone, and welcome to part two in this series on indexing in ServiceNow. In part one, we introduced the concept of indexes as well as provided a simple demonstration of how indexes can significantly improve query times. In this video, we're gonna delve a little bit deeper into the topic. So we're gonna look at three main things here. Firstly, the slow queries log. This will enable us to determine for which queries we need an index for. Second, we're going to examine the explain plan. So that means we're going to take a closer look at the query itself to determine if an index was used, if so, which one, and also what part of the index was used. And third and lastly, we're going to take a look at composite indexes in a little bit more detail. So in the previous video, we started by creating an index on our vehicles table, which resulted in a significant improvement in query times from around two and a half seconds down to a fraction of a second. Okay, so the next question is, how do I know when I need to create an index? Well, for our example that we've just been dealing with, a custom table in ServiceNow, you will definitely need indexes for those. You'll need to identify what queries are gonna be performed most often against that table, whether that is from user transactions, you know, lists, forms, uh, whether it is from background processes such as flows, scheduled jobs, etc and look at the fields that are being used in those queries and create indexes based on them. For system administrators, you'll need to monitor the overall performance of your instance. And one of the ways in which you can do that is by coming to the slow queries module here, this table right here. This table will record every query in the system where the total execution time for every query, every similar query exceeds five seconds. Okay. so. When looking at this list, we have to kind of remind ourselves, well, what do we actually mean by a slow transaction here? Is it a transaction that has maybe just occurred once or twice in a week where the execution of the query time was 10, 15, 20 seconds? Or is it more that we're looking at queries that are being performed more often where the total execution time is having a more of an impact on our database and our applications? So the latter is actually the case. So for those individual transactions uh, that are taking a long time to query, maybe as a result of some report that you've got querying thousands and thousands of records, uh, if it's only being performed once or twice a week, who cares? We could probably live with that. If that query also is being performed you know, late at night, that's having a less of an impact on the entire instance, we don't really need to worry about those transactions, uh, those queries rather. Uh, but again, for queries that are being performed more often, where the average execution time perhaps is half a second, one second, or something like that, uh, that that may potentially have more of an impact on your application. So these are the ones that we need to look at. So this is why we have both of the columns here in this table, execution time for individual transactions, plus or multiplied by the execution count should equal the total execution time, okay? So if we were to filter this list and search for things with our vehicles table in the query itself, we should find quite a few uh, examples here. Um, many as a result of previous testing that I performed with this table, but I think this second one here, the average execution time too. I'm not sure if that is with an index or not, uh, but we can see here we've got the SQL query right here and you can see the where statement uh, there showing where the make is Volvo. So that's actually the one uh, that we probably just performed or were performing both maybe before and after an index uh, was created. And if you go a little bit further across here under example URL, that's also a helpful field to uh, understand to decipher uh, what's being recorded in this table. Uh, everything with a name in it here, like a kind of a regular name here without the slash and kind of URL format here, uh, they usually indicate background jobs, so scheduled jobs uh, that are being executed. And everything with a slash at the beginning of it usually indicates that it's a user transaction that's been performed. Okay, one of the things that you can do is actually dive into the slow query record itself.
to see some more details. And one of the things that you can get from here, I won't go through everything in here, uh, is an explain plan. Okay, so for those of you who may be a little bit more familiar with uh, MySQL databases, uh, you'll know what explain plan are. Uh, they're basically uh, a record of information about the query that's being performed, uh, what index is being used, and so forth. So if we, after clicking on that button, you'll see here there's a related list. It's kind of pushed over to the side here, but if you open up this record, Okay, so without going through all the details of this record, again, there is documentation on the MySQL website about explained plans. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, but some things to look out for uh, in the uh, extra uh, field here, using index is actually a good sign because we're using an index. Uh, here we've got the possible keys or possible indexes. Now, at the moment, we only had one, which was uh, based on the make. Okay, so that was the only one really that was selected and uh, we've got the table that was queried and uh, this is also uh, a good sign here uh, that an index uh, was used here. Uh, this here is the number of rows that were queried uh, while using that index uh, to locate a record. Uh, so all that is looking quite good. Okay, so what I'd like to do now, I am going to come back to studio here. So uh, I just did a pause in the recording and created a separate index here based on the country and the year, okay? And we'll just do some more testing. And in doing so, I just wanna explain a few more points about indexing that I think you should be aware of, just some fundamental knowledge about how indexes work, okay? So importantly here, I've got for all my indexes, the two that I've created, I've got more than one column in each one, okay? You don't need to create individual indexes for every single column in your table that may actually defeat the purpose of speeding up your queries. So for the make, model, and city query that we uh, created, first of all, that is valid for not just queries based on the make, but also based on the make and the model, as well as make, model, and city. Okay, all those three queries will benefit from that index. Okay, so let's go back to our background processing here. And I'm just gonna modify this query here. At the moment, it's just based on the make, and I'm gonna put in that there, the model as well. Okay, it's an encoded query, and we'll just run that. Okay, so we can see here that was also extremely fast, only eight milliseconds. Okay, so if we were to come back and make another modification to this query and add the year, as well, or rather the city, where the city is, I'm not sure what ones we've got, but I'll just put in Orlando and we'll run that. Okay, you can see that's also relatively quick, 233 milliseconds. We'll just do maybe one more test there for that same query. Yeah, so you can see it's now down to six milliseconds. Okay, so again, all of those three separate queries benefit from that same index. Now let's do another test. Let's come back to our query here. I am going to uh, remove everything here except for the model. We'll just do a query on the model only. Okay, so let's remove that and run that script. Okay, so as you can see, that was a little bit high, 815 milliseconds. Let's do one more test. Run it once more. Okay, again, nearly 800 milliseconds. So definitely a lot slower than the six milliseconds that we were getting before. And that's because in this case, the index is not being used. The model field is in the index, but because the make field was the first element, first part of that index, that actually has to be the first part of your query as well for that index to work in general. Okay, so let's do another test. Uh, we've got the model here. I'm going to add the make here after the model, but they're both equality operators. So I think in this case, I'd have to double check, but I think in this case, because they're both equality operators and they're both in the index, the order in this case, I don't think matters. So let's run it. 
Yeah, so you can see here the query duration was only 8 milliseconds. So that's definitely an indication that an index was used in this case. All right, let's do another test. Uh, let's come back here. I'm going to make um, the make again, the first part of that query. And I'm going to add the model here once more. Uh, XC60. But this time I'm going to make the operator here greater than or equal to vol. So that would potentially get us Volvo and Volkswagen uh, makes here. Okay, so make and model. All right, let's try that. Okay, that was a little bit higher, 60 milliseconds. Let's come back and try it again. Okay, 53 milliseconds. Okay, not too bad. Okay, but I think what's happening here is, and maybe we can check the explain plan, is that because this is a range operator here in the first part of the index, the index will actually... Well, only the first part of that index will be used. Okay, so I'll actually stop here. If it was like this, like we originally had it, then it would use the make index, it will use the model index. And if we had city as well, it would use the city as well. Okay, but because we have a range here, uh, this is kind of where the index stops, if you like. So we use the make part of the index, but not the model. Okay, so to finish off, I've got one nugget of information to share with you, a little tip. So I'm going to come back to my explain plan here that we looked at earlier and then just come back to the slow query transaction that was linked to it. Okay. At the moment, you can only get an explain plan for queries that are located in the slow query table. Okay. So if you want to test new queries or whatever that may be not necessarily registered in slow query table, then you won't be able to get an explain plan from them. However, there is a workaround. Okay. So you can see here in the slow query record, we have the SQL statement uh, right here. So we've got that original one for make is equal to Volvo there. Okay. So what I can do, I can actually just copy that. I'm going to go back to slow query list. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new record. I can actually create a slow query record in ServiceNow. <laughs> so now what I can do, I can just paste that query right in there. And I can write any query that I want to. I can actually and maybe just do the following. I'm just going to do that where make is Volvo and where the model is... XC60 and save that. Because once I have this record in here, I can actually create an explain plan based on this query. And I can see, okay, what is the system going to do? Is it going to use an index? If so, which index? What part of the index? And so forth. I'm going to just confirm that my indexing that I've created is actually working. So let's go ahead and click on explain plan. And again, we'll come down to the and open that here. Okay, so we can see here that we were querying uh, this vehicle table here. The possible keys here that were evaluated were just the one make, even though we had a second index created as well that was based on the country so probably wasn't even considered uh, and we used two parts of the index here this is what this refers to because we were querying based on the make and the model if we also queried based on the city then we'll have another const uh, value here as well to indicate that three parts of that index were used but in this case two parts were used and the rows that were returned based on that index were 338 Okay, with that query. So if we actually go to the list here, and if I just add uh, XC60 in here, we've got 338 records returned. Okay, so this explain plan will help you 
evaluate what index was being used, how many records were returned using that index or scanned using that index, what part of the index was used and so forth. Okay, so that was a lot of work, a lot of testing, but I hope now you've got a basic understanding of how indexes work in general, but also in particular in ServiceNow. And as I said in the introduction, if you are a developer or an administrator of the Now platform, then you'll need to have an understanding of how indexes work because queries are going to be made against your tables all the time and you need to make sure that your applications that you're developing or that you're administering are working and performing as they should. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. Again, this is just a starting point. There are many resources out there uh, that you can use to learn more about indexing. I've put some links to uh, the ones that I found helpful down below and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.